everyone, we are back with a much anticipated and waited for tutorial. We're doing a total 180 today because the last thing I posted was a sleeping bag turned into a winter parka. And today we're doing summer clothes, my favorite season. Um, okay, <laughs> literally as I just said that, said that, I looked out the window and I think it's snowing. Doing. Moving on with my dream world that it is summer. As you smart people have also seen from the thumbnail and this title, that today is also going to be Reformation themed summer looks. I went on their website and just kind of scrolled through all their new stuff until I found a couple of things that I thought could be made by you. And in the full, full spirit of Reformation as a brand, I didn't go out to buy brand new raw fabric, but both of these items, tops, are going to be made with thrift store items. Little recycling going on for you, trying to keep things a little bit more sustainable. And I purposefully picked items that I felt confident you would be able to find at your fabric store. So let's get into it. The first item that you're going to need is a ribbed tank top. And I find with items that are expensive or look nice, there's a specific feature that really just like sends it into that zone. And with this, the key is to get some good ribbons. Thick, very visible lines, as obvious as possible knit ribbing. I found this olive khaki green tank. And as you can see, it's got some good ribbons, very, very visible vertical lines. That helps the fabric to look nice and plush and luxurious, hopefully. And yeah, I think it's gonna pull off the effect for us. Would you believe it? With this tank top, we are going to be making you a summer bodysuit. Let me show you how I did it. The first step is always the scariest, but I cut those two straps free from the back of the tank top and then also cut free the middle of the back that was between the two straps. Following the side seam as closely as possible, I also cut those free from the front of the tank top. The plan here is to swap the two side pieces so that when they're reattached to the side, the slope kind of like continues all the way, like it's just meant to be a straight line. I gave it a shot on the left side and it was a great success, so let me show you what I did here on the right. With a sharpie in a close color, I drew kind of the general direction of the slope that I needed the fabric to become so that they could match as the two sides met. Next, I cut with a little bit of seam allowance along that sloped line that I drew and then cut as closely as possible to the binding that was wrapping around the edge of the tank top. Bringing in the sewing machine, I closed the gap so that the line that I drew was now aligned with the binding and then sewed that in place following as well the stitches that were already on the binding so that it all kind of blended in. Wherever possible, just try to blend it all in. And from the front, you can see it's not super obvious. I repeated that with the bigger piece, folding it over so that the line that I drew lines up with the binding of the tank top and then sewed that in place with another straight stitch. Let's take a look at how that went. Voila, that's how that went on the front and the back. Pretty good. Before reattaching the sides, I went ahead and smoothed out the entire side that it was nice and straight and then clipped these together, trying to match them at the top as close as possible. I went all the way down the side with a straight stitch and that successfully reattached the sides in a swap position so that now there is a slope going down the back of the bodysuit. Then to close off the entire back of the bodysuit, I brought the two raw edges together, right sides touching, and sewed it down with a straight stitch. The next part is a bit tricky, but you want to figure out a way to lengthen the straps of your tank top. And as you can see from me cutting this binding loose, I used the binding that was on that middle panel that we had cut out, split it into two pieces, and then joined it with the existing tank top straps. But depending on how yours is constructed, just find a part of the tank top that matches what's going on with the straps and keep it going. You only really need to add about three or four inches, as you can see here. To make mine join nice and smoothly, I used a seam ripper to open up the fold a little bit of the binding, and then I sewed them right sides together, cut out some of the excess fabric, and then closed it up once more with a straight stitch so that my little addition was not too obvious. Now is a really great time to actually try on the bodysuit to make sure that you did make the strap long enough. Mine was working out, so I went ahead and sewed it in place right beside the side seam. If this was enough sewing for you, you can totally stop here and it's gonna make a really cute tank, but the original Reformation item that I copied this from was a bodysuit, so I 
dared myself to go for it. This is a pair of my underwear and using that same marker, I traced out the shape that I needed to cut out. Remember, back and front of underwear is not always the same, so make sure you differentiate on that. And that little fold on the bottom is so that I could match up the front and the back and close it off later. I cut out the shape that I had marked with a little bit of seam allowance so that I could hem the whole thing afterwards. And I did do my best to smooth out my drawing along the side so that everything did match up in a generally nice shape. Knit fabric is so great to hem. I just threw a zigzag stitch all the way around and then I brought those two bottom edges together like I had planned and did a zigzag stitch across a tiny overlap on them to seal it all off. Now that I've successfully created two leg holes, I went ahead and did one more zigzag stitch and that gave me a fully closed off, nice and clean hem for the bottom of the bodysuit. If I was really committed, I would have added hook and eye closures to be able to escape from the bottom. So if you wanna do that, go for it. Let's not forget the original form that I found this tank top in at Value Village and cue the montage for how it looks now. <laughs> is a bodysuit. I am not catfishing you on that. Following the shape of my underwear, it was a huge success. It fits really well and you can tell from the modeling shots hopefully that even though I wore satin pants, you can't see the underwear lines because it was a good fit. And I'm super excited to wear this all summer and style it with a bunch of things. I'm pretty amazed and pleased with how this turned out. This next one is a little bit more challenging but very rewarding. And the item that you're gonna need for it is a dress shirt, preferably a nice big dress shirt so that you got lots of fabric to work with again. I will say if you do have the choice to try to find a dress shirt where the fabric is not super crisp. Mine ended up being pretty crisp, but I have a feeling this tutorial would turn out even better if it was a softer material that draped a little bit more. But the main thing I loved about this fabric was it's teeny teeny tiny blue plaid. Just looking at it, I was like, this feels reformation, this feels summer, this feels outdoorsy, aspirational, that it is warm outside, and so we're going with it. Button up the dress shirt, lay it all nice and flat. The very first step we're gonna do is cut off the entire top and create that big top opening. I used my freshly finished bodysuit to give a good guess as to where that needed to take place, but pretty much you wanna make sure you've left some fabric at that armpit seam. Be fearless, go ahead and chop the whole top off and also go ahead and chop some of the sleeves off too. Next, I folded the entire shirt so that now I was looking at the side seam and I cut off a pretty good chunk of the back. Taking your body measurements for the distance between the top and bottom of your boob, I took that and cut two slits that were that distance from the top of my shirt. Notice I did not cut the button placket because I kind of just don't want to disturb that. Just two slits, as you can see. We're gonna do two rows of the longest possible stitch on the top half of the two slits. So these two rows of stitches are going to help us to gather the fabric, which is gonna create some shape for your chest. So these are my two lines. And on one side, I bring together the threads and tie them together along the top. And on the other side, I bring the threads together and tie them together along the bottom. Now, if you take the leftover threads that are not tied and pull on them, you can start nudging the fabric along it's very satisfying and so this is me gathering it so that I can create a little bit of pucker now with the two sides gathered I want to eliminate all the extra fabric that is below the chest because the area below my chest is a smaller diameter than the area where my chest is I measured how much fabric I would need to cover the front half of my body and I kept that all on the shirt and cut away the excess on two 
sides. The plan is that I'm going to re-sew the gathered part of the bust and the two sides all back together with a straight stitch. That reseals the bottom, gets rid of those slits that we cut, and now you have a gathered chest area and then a straight and flat bottom area. I went ahead and removed the basting stitches that I did for the gathering so that it's nice and clean, and we're ready to move on to the top opening. For the top, I used this thin elastic band and I started pinning it all the way along the entire top opening, which does cover the top edge of your two sleeves as well as the entire top front. With the elastic that I I was using, I pretty much had to pull it as tight as possible to span this entire distance. Just based off of my experience from finishing this project, you might want to do the same. Just be maximum elasticity with the elastic as you pin and sew it. The pinning system that I'm using here is to pin at equal distances all along the shirt, breaking it down into smaller and smaller sections every single time. I find it helps me a lot to make sure the elastic is super even. All of that can be sewn together with a zigzag stitch. I had the elastic on the wrong side or inside of my shirt and I just went all the way across the entire top. Slight adjustment here. After trying this on, I found out that the top actually hit way too high on my front compared to what I wanted and I kind of needed to cut an inch off. So this is me removing that extra inch and just kind of smoothing it out all the way to the armpit. This did mean I had to re-pin the elastic and re-sew it to the top edge but you already know how to do that with a zigzag stitch, so let me just wrap that up and then we can move on to the next step. Now the bottom opening of the sleeves is still totally free. I'm taking this little elastic and zigzag sewing it into a loop. This is a length that fits pretty comfortably around my arm. That is going to be attached to the bottom of the sleeve and then sewn in the exact same way just to hem that all off and create a nice little closure. To hem, I've got that first zigzag stitch, which you've seen me do along the top, and then I just fold it in one more time to do another zigzag stitch. This completely hides the elastic and looks pretty clean from the outside. Taking that back piece that we had completely cut free in the beginning of this whole tutorial, I folded in the raw edge along the top, a nice and narrow straight stitch, and then I folded it in one more time with another straight stitch. This is a super easy way to hem crisp fabric, and so this gets it ready to be attached back to the top. I hope you are ready to learn how to sure if you've never done this before. It's really satisfying, but what you need is elastic. You can see this here, and the annoying thing is you will have to wind your bobbin by hand with this elastic thread. Full confession, I think I had to rewind my bobbin maybe five times in order to finish this entire thing. I watched a really good tutorial to do this, and on my very first try, these were my results, so I was super, super happy. I will include the link to the tutorial that I watched, but basically your bottom thread is the elastic thread, your top thread is your normal sewing thread, and as you go through with a straight stitch, the elasticity of the bottom thread starts to gather everything up. Once I realized how repetitive and patience requiring shirring was, I realized that I did not want to do any more than I needed to, and so I went ahead and took the top, measured how far down I wanted it to go so that it hit just at my waist, and then cut off the excess. So that let me know how many more lines I needed to do for shirring in order to make it all the way to the bottom of my top. Cleaning up the top, let's get it ready to be attached to this beautiful shirt piece that we have done. So I did my best to unfold it and try to get oh, this whole mess of threads nice and neat. I pinned it right sides touching along the two open sides of my top, and this basically closes off the entire thing. It is starting to resemble what I want it to become. I'm getting excited. And after I did this, it was a little bit big for me, so I just took in more fabric at that part where I joined the back to the shirring. Hemmed it all off at the bottom, giving you this shot here to remember the men's dress shirt that this once was. And now it is my convertible summer top. Happens every summer Things are moving slow And time to unwind only gives me time to spend alone I confess that I originally had planned three tutorials for this video, but with these two alone, I was like, that's enough sewing and I really need to get this video up for Friday. So here it is. <laughs> Let me show you. Ba Bam, we got that covered. And then over here, okay, we did this. <laughs> this, this is the third thing I had planned. Um, 
And yeah, I think I'll do a video where I show you a couple of different ways to make your own romper. And so this one will be one of them. And then I'll include some other ideas in that video. How does that sound? Good? 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 <laughs> Let me know. Thanks everyone who's been giving, leaving such hilarious comments on my So It Begins series. I'm just like breaking down all the beginner stuff you need to know to start sewing. So if you're one of those people who, I know you exist, you're like watching these videos, but you don't actually sew, this is for you. I'll put a link to that series in the description and I'll see you there or see you next time for another tutorial. Bye.